Hey guys, Mike from Magnanimous here, and we are back live from Studio One for another build of the day. Uh, if you guys haven't been a part of this series, we've taken a few breaks uh, since we were going pretty regularly with this, but this is a live stream that we'll do uh, over various pieces of our gear, talking about how they can integrate together and be used for a particular shoot, things like that. We have a wealth of videos at this point, a uh, few that you should check out if you haven't watched them that kind of correlate with today's video would be our uh, self-recording video. I have the Canon XF705 next to me here up on a hi-hat that's pointing at me. And that's gonna be my camera so that I can uh, show me streaming through the Mac Mini that I have next to me. Uh, if you are curious on how to set that camera up for self-shooting and why it's a great camera, check out that video. We also have a video about how to stream and various software pieces and hardware pieces you can use for that. Today's video is a supplemental video along with that. We had a uh, ton of requests from people needing a streaming solution for Zoom, as well as other online conferencing uh, software and things like that, but I'd say mostly Zoom specifically. And unfortunately, with the Blackmagic capture devices that we show in the last streaming video, it's not an easy process. The signal comes in the, the computer as a very high-end video signal, which is great for streaming purposes, but can be challenging for using more prosumer software. To resolve that issue, we have a new uh, capture device that we picked up. This is the Magewell HDMI capture card version two, and it is about as simple as you can get in terms of capture cards to go into your computer. For those of you who may be new for streaming and things like that, uh, the signal that comes out of a traditional camera and the HDMI port on your uh, computer aren't friendly, and you aren't gonna be able to take the signal from that camera and just send it through the HDMI. Uh, in order to get the camera from your signal into the computer, you need a capture card device to essentially convert that signal into a data stream that the computer can then process. The Magewell adapter here makes it extremely easy because it's, as far as I can tell, plug and go. And I don't usually use that phrase very lightly because I usually reserve it for things that are quite literally just plug it in and you're good to go. But for the most part, this adapter really does that. It rents with one single USB type A to A cable that you'll use to run it into either a Mac or PC. It's one of the greatest features of this. It's broadly compatible against any operating system. Uh, I believe it is also compatible with Linux if you happen to be running that, although I think the majority of you out there will either be on Mac or PC. Uh, it'll support video signals uh, up to 1080p, 60 frames per second, uh, which is awesome, especially for modern production cameras that often like to shoot in 60p. You can handle that true 60 progressive signal. Uh, we're using the XF705 today, as I had mentioned, because I just like it as a very simple, easy to work with, uh, self-recording camera. It's got the servo lens on there. So I have my remote right here and I can zoom the lens from where I'm sitting here without having to go around and change things on the camera. Uh, so it's gonna be an awesome solution for like a Zoom conference meeting or something like that. I am gonna be feeding you guys my computer screen so you can see what I do inside the computer. But first, let's go ahead and just connect everything. It's really just as simple as connecting your USB to the USB port on your MacBook or your computer. In this case, mine's in the uh, back of my Mac Mini here. And I'm gonna connect the USB to the USB side on my capture card. You'll notice the lights turn blue as it connects and is powered up. And if we were to take this into a uh, bit of software, it actually sends out a test signal anytime that it doesn't have video going through it so that you know that it is still connected and you have a good connection at least here, which makes troubleshooting connections a lot easier. Uh, for our purposes though, I am gonna go ahead and just connect our HDMI in here. Uh, I found that you can connect the two cables in whichever order you would like, uh, but for the sake of uh, consistency, I still like to connect everything to the computer first and then chain my signal flow up towards camera. Now, uh, all you'll need to do to connect to Zoom is go to your desktop and launch the Zoom application. 
Uh, this will work both on the native desktop application as well as the web browsing application. Because what's unique about this adapter is the signal comes into the computer as a webcam signal, making it much more widely compatible. So uh, let's go ahead and cut to my desktop view. And I'm just going to go ahead and launch the Zoom program. I have went ahead and set it on my desktop here for quick access. If you need to, just go through your Applications folder and find it. And you can either use this method to join an, an existing meeting, or in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just launch a new meeting. And it's going to go ahead and connect. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just say join with computer audio. Uh, and close out of this because I'm going to set those settings separately. Looks like it didn't recognize it, so for troubleshooting, we'll just unplug our USB and plug it right back in. There we go. You notice the test signal flash for a moment. That uh, would be it detecting the signal before the video came through. And I'll go ahead and hit this little arrow right at the top up here, which is going to open up video settings. And I just like to come here just to make sure that everything is going the way I'd like. So for my camera, I'm going to make sure that it's using USB capture HDMI. I prefer to enable HD so it looks nice and I have that HD video. Uh, if you're having trouble with bandwidth or low internet connection, you can unclick that and you'll have a lower video signal, so it'll take up less uh, bandwidth on your Wi-Fi. Then the most important part is for audio. So I have a shotgun mic that I've mounted to the top of the camera that is feeding audio into the camera that's then feeding into the Magewell converter. So for my audio, I'll select the audio section and under microphone, I'll make sure that I also select USB capture HDMI. You'll notice the input level is already going as I'm speaking, because now the audio is coming through cleanly through the same USB capture uh, through the Magewell converter. And with that, I would be set up. I could go through the whole Zoom meeting, and this here is my uh, camera and my audio source. So if I didn't want to have to look at the computer or anything, I could just sit here and have my meeting, talk to anyone I need to. And as I mentioned with the XF705, if I wanted to, I can go ahead and zoom and make changes and things right from the remote in my hand so I don't have to run around the camera, which makes it a really nice, easy, high-end solution. Uh, this will be an awesome solution for anybody who wants a package they could send to a uh, client who wants to view and talk to sets remotely, which is something that has been requested a lot lately. Or if you have an actor or a subject who's quarantined at home and you want to send them a camera, we can ship this as well as a camera and mics and things directly to them. And it's a very, very quick and simple way for them to get a signal into the computer and do a stream or a recording or join a meeting or conference that way. Uh, the other thing you can do with it is very much like in our last video, you can integrate it into whichever streaming uh, platform you're using, such as OBS, Wirecast, or something like that. I do want to show you guys how to do that, though, as the integration is slightly different than the Blackmagic soft or pieces that we used before. So why don't we go ahead and close out of our Zoom meeting, and I'm going to go ahead and launch OBS Studio. I always like my OBS to be set up in its studio layout so that I have a preview and program monitor. So my program always automatically boots up like that. If yours looks a little different than mine, go up and adjust your view settings and you can view it in studio mode and it'll look just like mine does. Uh, first of all, you'll always want to start by creating a new scene. It looks like one was already existing. I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, oh, well, can't delete it if we don't have anything else. That's fine. We can go ahead and use this existing scene. I'm just going to uh, rename it our test scene. And then I'm going to go over to our sources window. There are two sources that we'll need to add in. Because we're not using the Blackmagic device here, the computer won't take the video signal and read embedded audio in it. We're going to need to say that there's a video capture device and an audio capture device, both of which will be the USB, USB HDMI capture from the Magewell converter. 
So I'll come down here, and first let's go ahead and get our video in. So I'll add a video capture device. I'll go ahead and just name this Magewell Video. And then I'll have device here. And I can select USB capture HDMI. And there I am. It automatically comes in. You can select your video here. And this is really the difference that from the Magewell adapter and the Blackmagic mini recorder or intensity shuttle that we showed in previous videos. Instead of it coming through as that high-end like video signal where you're selecting the exact resolution and frame rate that you're sending, here it's coming through as a web camera signal. And so by default, it's going to come in as 720 and gives you a few resolution presets you can adjust from. For me, I always like to choose high. That's going to be HD 1080p, and I can hit OK. Then we want to get our audio in because here it's just going to be video. I'm going to go here and add an audio input capture as well. This is similar to the method that we used in the previous video to add the Zoom H6 audio in. But in this case, I'm just going to call it Magewell Audio. And then under Device, I'll select USB Capture HDMI. Now, there's no audio down here in our audio mixer yet because this is still in our preview. But if I hit transition and push this to our program, you'll now notice Magewell Audio is right down here in my audio mixer. My audio is coming through nice and clean. I actually have the camera set to automatically uh, level the audio. So in case I were to laugh real loud or uh, clap my hands or something like that, the camera is making those adjustments for me. So my levels stay nice and even. And here you could then do a stream, uh, integrate this into whatever other OBS uh, sources and scenes that you all have. Uh, simple, quick, and easy method. Either one is just as viable, but I've really loved the ease of use with the Magewell converter. Uh, namely, you noticed I did not have to adjust the signal the camera was sending out or anything here on the computer in terms of frame rates and resolutions and things like that. It's much, much quicker for you to just plug your ca uh, camera in, plug it into your computer, and get started going right away, uh, in addition to being compatible with Skype and Zoom and all of those other software pieces. The last thing I'll show you guys before uh, I close out will be the test signal pattern I mentioned. So if you notice my HDMI goes out, you'll get a no signal uh, test signal bar there. And that is showing you essentially that the Magewell converter is connected to the computer and it just isn't getting a signal. Uh, for instance, earlier I was getting set up, making sure everything was working properly. And I was really confused why I could not get an image in OBS. All I saw was my no signal. So I followed my signal chain and realized I hadn't connected my HDMI cable. And that's, of course, why I had no signal on the computer. So it's just a useful, helpful tip for you to know that the Magewell converter has connected properly to the computer. And if you're getting it, make sure you check your camera connection going into the Magewell adapter. Uh, so don't freak out if you're working with it and you see the test signal pattern. Just know that you need to check something on your video side to make sure that the signal coming in here is clean and good. With that, let's uh, check and see if there were any questions of anyone watching. Do you have any actual ports into OBS? Uh, as of now, I do not know a way to integrate Zoom into OBS, but there's a way uh, with a free plugin to use Zoom as a uh, like a camera for Zoom uh, and use your OBS feed. It is a little convoluted, requires some knowledge of uh, camera sp or computer specifics to get the software downloaded as it's a third-party plugin, not from OBS. Uh, one of the unique things with OBS Studio is it's open source software. So third-party people can develop their own plugins and attachments and things like that. Uh, I've played around with it. It can work, but it is nuanced. So I just recommend if that's something you want to do to make sure you do your homework and your research to make sure that it's going to integrate properly into whatever you're looking to do. Um, but yeah, it is uh, certainly possible is what I'll leave it at. Uh, any other questions we've got? All right. 
Well, guys, if you have questions later on, please do still comment below. I check those all the time, and I'll comment and try and answer those as we go. Uh, we don't know when the next build of the day will be, but I will say we have a lot of new streaming devices coming in, uh, namely the Blackmagic A10 Mini that I'm really excited about and hoping to have a video to you guys soon about how to integrate that into a multicam live stream for a very, very quick and easy solution. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, yeah, if you guys need streaming solutions, not only do we rent the individual little pieces of gear that you'll need to do it, but we also have a partner over at perfectcircle.pro who can hook you up with a crew and the gear needed to get live stream up and running. So if you are busy dealing with talent and things like that and setting up the specifics of the stream, we can take care of all of the headache of working out the exact technical requirements and all of that and have a technician come out to set to help you out with that. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely check that out. And as always, guys, we've been coming live from Studio One, which is our awesome rental space. So if you guys need studio rentals at all, definitely check us out and visit magrents.com. But I'll plan to see you guys on the next build of the day.